Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Baloney Basketball. As you can see, I got a very special guest here on my side. Needs really no introduction. I mean, you guys know him if you follow the show, but I will introduce him. It is Johnny. Uh, how's it going, my man? What's up, Garrett? Long time no see. Excited to be back. Uh, excited to make an appearance. Can't wait to talk some ball. Yeah, uh, it should be pretty interesting. We got a few things to touch on today. I think the first thing we're going to touch on is our Chicago Bulls. How ironic is that? Um, and really not just the Bulls, but also like the Hornets and Nets have been hitting it uh, recently. But the COVID issue, you know, like we've had 10 people on our team go out with COVID. So, like, I guess what I'll ask you is, like, what do you think of <laughs> this whole situation, like with everyone going out right now? You know, you see a couple and it's – a reason to <clears throat> to worry but not be like on the hot seat and then you see a whole team get ravaged by it and you realize that they've played three teams in the past week and now what's going to happen there um and then to add on top of that the bulls have had announcers test positive for covid and enter the protocols um so it just seems like one domino after another um really putting the league in a very tough position. The Nets um, yesterday played with just eight guys. Um, the Raptors have been hit by it. The Hornets have been hit by it. Um, so it really makes you think, does the league just take a week off? Will that do it? Um, they're in a really tight position, man, because they were looking okay for some time. Um, like I said, a positive here or there. Obviously, isn't the greatest thing, but it doesn't seem like it's going to shut the league down until you realize how quickly this thing spreads. So, uh, should be interesting to see how Adam Silver and company handles it from here. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny you even said the announcer part. Like, you know, usually, well, the Neil Funk replacement for the Bulls. Like, I haven't been to on his side yet. Like, it's going to take some time. Um, and Stacey King, like you said, like I mean, he was out. It's like. I'm not always watching, like, the Bulls announcers right now. It's like, what's going on? But, yeah, like, I agree. Like, you know, in a team like, you know, the Nets, you know, like, they're already struck from, you know, other issues. Like, you know, they had Blake out of the rotation for so long. He finally just came back the other day. Uh, and then, like, Kyrie Irving, we already know, like, that whole situation. And then now it's like you're missing more players. Uh, the Hornets, like, they're a young team building. Uh, I guess just on the matter of the Bulls, though, I think, like, you know, that's, like, the first league action they finally took and, like, actually suspending games. And maybe you're going to start to see more of this. Or, like you said, like, they could take, like, a week or two off and maybe, like, get everyone kind of basically free of the COVID or, like, basically wait till their 10-day protocol is up. Um, but I don't know, like, what's going to happen. I think that it's – I mean, it's just weird because, like, it – Seems a lot like last year, and I think people were starting to think like, "Oh, we're going to transition from this." But I don't know. Like, you, how long do you do you think maybe like this is going to last? I I don't think it's going away at any point this year. It's a matter of how much they can control it. Um, I think they've waited too long to suspend games, starting with the Bulls, um, because they're just. They're trying as hard as they can to keep games going, make sure teams are at the eight-player minimum, um, and basically just saying that if you're not at the eight, at the eight-player minimum, sign somebody and, and get yourself there so we can play. But it just seems like they're putting everybody in jeopardy. I agree with that, yeah. Um, well, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, you know some big event, probably the biggest event that's happened over the past week, and that is Stephen Curry becoming the all-time leader in three point makes, um, you know, it's been, everyone's been hyping up for the past, you know, few games, like, oh, when's it going to happen? Is it going to happen against Seth, his brother? Um, but it happened in Madison square garden where he probably had his biggest, like first breakout game really when he dropped like 54, like several years ago. So I guess like, what do you think about Curry, you know, finally breaking that record and being number one on that leaderboard? I think it takes a lot of weight off of these things right here, his shoulders. <laughs> um, you could see for the past couple of weeks that it was weighing him down. And this is not uh, this is not me making excuses for the way Steph was playing. But when you're that close to a record, when you're that close to breaking something that's been there for so long, um, defenses know what you're trying to do. Defenses already know that you're a great shooter and that you're looking for your shot. But 
defenses now even more know that you're just hunting for that next three to get closer and closer. Um, but the storyline couldn't be greater to, br- to break it in the mecca of, of all basketball, to break it at Madison Square Garden with Ray Allen in attendance, with Reggie Miller in attendance. Um, it just seemed like the stars aligned. Um, it was such a big event that, I mean, I was able to watch it on the airplane last night, um, and it was just something that I knew I couldn't miss. Like, Steph not only being one of my favorite players, but just such a great shooter, so awesome to watch. Um, I love how they gave him that little five-minute barrage after he hit it, after the Warriors intentionally fouled to shake hands with everybody, to to give the ball to his pops, to embrace Ray, embrace Reggie. Uh, it was really just an awesome thing to see. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I mean, I'm sure most people have realized this for the past few years now, but in case you didn't, like, it's probably pretty obvious he's the greatest shooter ever. So um, that just kind of basically solidifies it. But like you said, like, I think it definitely takes a lot of weight off his shoulder because over the past week, you know, people have been talking about it, I think, a lot since he was at, like, 16 away, and I forget who they were playing um, that night. But, you know, the point is that, like, yeah, like, it, it's great to, like, finally, you know, get that record. Now you're at the top. And then he said he's just going to try and push it to a limit where no one can reach. Um, and usually it's funny because, like, you know, they had just played the night before against Indiana. And usually, like, in a back-to-back, like, you know, he might rest or he might, like, get limited time or whatever. But, like, no, like, he, he made it seem like he wanted to do it, like, in the Mecca. Um, and now, like, I mean, I guess we'll see. I know they have another back-to-back coming up like this week maybe he sits out one of those because he's finally got the record but it is like you know it's definitely pretty impressive and I mean you think about it like he's still kind of in his prime you know like we don't know how much longer he's gonna play at this elite level um I mean he's an MVP candidate so far this year so he very well could push this to like maybe 4,000 range and you know obviously no one's even gotten 3,000 I mean I don't know. Like, do you think 4,000 is possible? I think he has eight years of 200 plus threes. Um, he's at what, like 29, 20 in the 2900. So, say three, six, I'd say somewhere around like 37 to 39 is probably realistic. But yeah, I mean, he'll be able to, to push that number up pretty high. And I'm expecting here in the next week that. He breaks out with the 10 plus three point game um, now that this is all behind him. Yeah, I mean, we saw a lot of those early in the year. Uh, I know lately uh, he's been struggling a little bit, but he did break the record. So maybe we'll see some more like nine, 10 three point games by him pretty soon. Um, but let's let's move on. Let's talk about uh, something else that's been pretty impressive as of late. Uh, two teams in particular. Uh, that I wanted to talk about. It's the LA Clippers. You know, they've been obviously without Kawhi Leonard all year. And then more recently, Paul George, you know, he's missed some time with injury. And then the Grizzlies, you know, they've been without John Morant. Uh, And I know they finally got some of the other guys back. But, you know, I think these are two teams that, one, didn't really get much uh, recognition before the season, even with Jaha and with Paul George expected to be there. Um, now they've missed some games recently and both these teams are on big winning streaks. So I guess, and it's not like they're playing bad teams either. Like the Grizzlies have gotten some good wins. The Clippers just beat the Suns the other day. What do you think of, um, these two teams and their recent good play? Yeah, I think a lot of the Clippers comes back to Ty Lue. Um, I'll be the first to admit like when the Cavs won, it was, oh, they have LeBron, this and that. Um, but Ty Lue deserves every ounce of credit um that's been thrown his way just looking at the lineups he's putting out there the players he has um and it's not to say that they're like fielding b or g league teams but they're not you know without paul george without Kawhi leonard that literally takes away 40 50 percent of your scoring like that's a huge chunk of what you do um and so to see them continue to play with the success they have i think that's just a testament to what he's been able to build there in la um whether it's literally just drawing up awesome after timeout plays, um, maximizing rotations, getting big games from guys like Brandon Boston Jr. Um, it's literally just stuff like that, where every single day you don't know who the hero is going to be. Maybe Luke Kennard hits six threes. Um, that's just kind of the thing we've been accustomed to seeing with the Clippers. So in terms of the Clippers, just giving Ty Lue everything he deserves, 
with the Grizzlies, it's everybody's <clears throat> excuse me has stepped up without John Morant now. And Desmond Bain's been great all year. He's been a great three point shooter. Dylan Brooks has been Dylan Brooks. He's feisty on the defensive end. Also hits threes. Um, and we started to see Jaron Jackson finally start to um, pick up and build on some of the things that we've seen in the past. Because um, early on in his career, he you know he started to started to live up to the name he was, started to live up to that draft pick, and then injuries um, and slow starts back from injury. But now we've seen him really start to uh, move forward and, and climb the ladder. So great in that respect. And then Tyus Jones has just held down that point guard spot, man. He just doesn't make mistakes. He's sound with the ball, <clears throat> gets assists, and just doesn't turn the ball over. Um, and really what he does is he just doesn't lose games for you, and that's exactly what this Grizz team needs. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll, I'll start with the Grizzlies. Uh, I mean, you kind of hit it there with, like, other guys are stepping up that, you know, a lot of these guys are really underrated. I mean, Tyus Jones is one of them. Dylan Brooks is another. And I think people don't realize, like, how important he was last year in them making the playoffs and then how great he was really in the playoffs, too. Um, and he missed part of the season early on. Now he's finally back. Jaron Jackson Jr., like you said, he's playing um, – how we kind of saw a little bit like before his injuries, uh, like before COVID basically, like before it all started. Uh, Cause that's when I thought personally he was playing at his best. Uh, Steven Adams. I mean, he's having like quite literally a rebound year. Um, not just for the fact that he's getting a lot of high rebound games, but you know, last year with new Orleans didn't seem like he was a great fit, but now like, you know, the Grizzlies, like they also got guys like Xavier Tillman and I know Zyra Williams, he was a rotation player. He's missed some games. Finally got Kyle Anderson back. So it's like, you look at all these guys, a lot of them are young. And then you put Ja Moran back in the mix. I mean, that's just a scary team going forward. And then the Los Angeles Clippers, I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If they're fully healthy, I think they're the best team in the Western Conference. Realistically, I think that they just fit well together. And I think now they have like that motivation, you know, Young guys like Terrence Mann and, you know, even Brandon Boston have stepped up, like you said. Uh, Luke Kennard, Isaiah Hardenstein's another important one. So, I don't know. I think that the, like, this new look Clippers is something that you can't really overlook either. It's kind of like the team uh, two years ago, like when they had Lou Will and Gallinari and Harrell in the sense where it's like no one's going to really give them much attention. But, like, there's still going to be a team that can basically compete or push any team to the limit. And then you factor in, like, you could have Paul George back. Well, he should be back. <laughs> um, and then Kawhi Leonard, like, um, you know, who knows? Like, if he comes back, too, it just makes it even scarier. So that, that's kind of just where I sit on these two teams. Yeah, like, I've always been a big Clippers guy as well. And you have PG and Kawhi Leonard, two of the top three and D players in the league. Um certainly is a team that's on my radar and then the Grizz are just young up and coming so excited to see wherever John Morant can take them it should be fun to see um well let's talk about a team that's not so fun to see right now and that is the Detroit Pistons um you know recent news just came out that Jeremy Grant's gonna miss about a month or a month and a half I believe with a thumb injury um and they've already lost like 12 in a row I know that there's still a young team they're kind of like rebuilding and stuff but I guess, what what do you make of the Pistons right now? Yeah, so you said they haven't been fun to watch lately. They haven't been fun to watch in years. Um, they've made the playoffs with the, the the Blake and Andre Drummond teams, but truly they haven't been a team that's actually had any aspirations of winning anything since they last won in 04. Um, where they go from here, I don't know. Cade Cunningham is obviously a step in the right direction. Um, very hard to detect early on, A, because of injuries, and B, because of how bad the team is around him. Like, if he is a bona fide superstar, that really could be the face of the franchise. Um, but he's certainly a very good above-average player nonetheless. Jeremy Grant, do they just trade him now? I mean, sign him to the big contract. Teams would covet Jeremy Grant. I'm just not sure that he fits their timeline. Um, I'm very bummed to see Sadiq Bey take a large step back um, in his second season because he just had such a good rookie season last year. Um, and to see him not be able to build upon that just sucks, especially considering that this Pistons team is just in dire need of talent. Um, 
when you're when you're so far at the bottom it's not even about fit it's not even about need it's about just getting talent in the building um and that's what they did with Kate Cunningham but man they still aren't close like they're still at rock bottom and Kate Cunningham might just allow them to get their head above water so they can breathe yeah I mean I'm pretty sure at this point in the season, at least for until Jeremy Grant comes back and stuff like that, um, people are probably a lot of people are going to be watching the Pistons just for the fact of Cade Cunningham and see like his development. I will say though, I mean, I'm kind of worried. I mean, I like Cade Cunningham, but I've kind of been a little skeptical this year. Um, and I know it's typical for young players to be like turnover prone and like shooting poorly from the field, and then that gets better over time as they start to elevate their like shot IQ and stuff but I don't know like it could be a sign like you said where it's just like maybe just because it's simply a bad team and you know getting more opportunity more looks I mean we saw that with like Michael Carter Williams basically and then like look what's happened since uh, but I'm not saying like that's the biggest thing here the biggest thing is that the Pistons are just awful um, and to put it simply uh, Sadiq Bey has not been great this year uh, to put it simply, um, Isaiah Stewart, I mean, of course, he's still young, but I think he's kind of got a long way to go. Uh, Killian Hayes as well, they've started like playing more, but I don't know. It's just like it, it, there's not really much to think about really the Pistons right now. And it'll be interesting to see if they actually do trade Jeremy Grant um, because the trade deadline's in about two months. So if he's out like almost until then with a thumb injury, how many teams are going to be too interested in taking him? And I mean, we'll see. I mean, he has to fit their timeline. Like you said, I know teams like the Blazers and the Lakers are interested, but um, you know, that's, that's probably the type of teams that I think would probably most want him if he's not playing for a long stretch before then, like with that injury. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. We, we can move on. That's probably longer than we needed to talk about the Pistons. Um, now, this is interesting because, like, I got, you know, an NBA trivia game going on this year. And are you excited for this? It's rock and roll, man. I don't want to embarrass myself, but let's see what happens. It, it's fine. Everyone's felt like that at some point. Um, <laughs> so I'll read the rules for the viewers uh, just real quick. So I got five questions for him. Um, each one has five possible hints. And for all those five hints, you get three guesses and two skips. Uh, but if you guess it right in less hints, you get more points. So say you use one hint and get it right, five points, two hints, four points. Then it keeps going from there. So there's 25 possible points with that. And then at the very end, it's just one NBA question relating to me in some way. Uh, but that has no hints. That's also a five-pointer. You get that right, you get 30 points, um, assuming you get the other 25. But that's basically it. Uh, are, are you ready to uh, go? Yeah. Can you, the skips, um, is that just skipping a question or is that? You, you can skip. So like um, I can give you a hint and then you could either guess for a chance at like maybe five points on the first one. Or if you uh, want to skip, you could save like another one of your guesses for that question. Okay. That and what, <clears throat> and once I guess on a question, is that it? No, you, you get three guesses per question. Okay. All right, um, let's rock. All right. Uh, so the first question, first hint, it could be anything with the NBA past or present. Uh, this is a retired NBA player that has produced multiple hip hop ra- records for rapper Nas. Um, now you could guess for a chance of five points or you could try and be safe, but. Did, did you say uh, uh, present or retired? He's a retired NBA player. Oh, retired. Okay. I'll, I'll take a hint. Okay. So the next hint for chance, four points. He made all NBA first team once in his career in the 2000, 2001 NBA season. Do another hint. Okay. And then after this, you can basically guess freely on this question. So the third hint is he was the leading scorer on the only franchise that forced the Kobe and Shaq Lakers during the three-peat years uh, to a deciding game. So like a game seven or like a game five in the first round, potentially. He did it twice. Shoot. 
hip hop. <laughs> Thinking of teams, I was like, they're pushing. I don't know if the Kings ever pushed him to say. Uh, this is his first team on NBA, though. Once. Oh, and, and you can <clears throat> guess after this one, too, because you already used two skips on this question. Um, this is not good. Well, first team all NBA rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to say anything. I'm embarrassed myself, man. Uh, Western Conference teams, Kings. Wow. I would say, but obviously, the way incorrect, Chris Weber. I know that's way wrong. Just can't think of any other names right now. Top of my head. It actually is Chris Webber. Is it actually? Yeah. That's oh, pretty wow. good. The other ones were like, he was on the Fab Five and he's on NBA Game Time. So that would have probably gave it away. But that's yeah. pretty impressive that you got it before that, though. I was just thinking Kings. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you got three points right now. I always tell my guests, if you try to get at least 10, that's a good goal. Um, so here's the second question. First hint. This is a current NBA player that once did a glow-in-the-dark dunk during the dunk contest. Oh, glow-in-the-dark. All right, I'll go with another hint. Okay, the next hint is he once finished top three in both MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. And he's current player, MVP and Defensive Player of the Year? Yes. Um... MVP. What was that? That's another hint. All right, the third hint is he loves fishing. <laughs> oh, I saw that video. Shoot. Yeah, he, that's in the bubble. He's fishing. Uh, did he? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm thinking about the wrong guy. Or it's him. I'm not sure if he, was ever, if he was ever in the dunk contest, but I'm going to rock with Paul George. It is Paul George. That's okay. pretty good. Oh, uh, wow. Um, yeah, that dunk contest, I remember seeing it live, and I thought it was the best dunk. In, it was in uh, 2012 when uh, Jeremy okay. Evans won it or whatever. Because I was going to say, I don't remember Paul George being in the dunk contest, but when you said fishing, I remember the bubble. I thought it was Paul George. Yeah, yeah. It was. That's pretty good. So you got six right now. You're, you're doing pretty well. Uh, so here's the third question, first hint. Uh, this is a former NBA Hall of Famer that once finished top three in MVP voting. So he's a former player, Hall of Famer, and he was once top three in MVP. All right, I'll take another hint. Okay, the next hint is his father also played in the NBA. So this guy's retired, but then his father also played in the NBA. Yeah, and his father, I mean, obviously I'm not saying if he is or isn't a Hall of Famer, but uh, this guy is a Hall of Famer, and he's a former player, and he was once top three in MVP. His dad also played in the NBA. Okay. Former father also played. I'll go with another hint. Okay, so the next hint is... He shared the first ever Co Rookie of the Year award honor in NBA oh, history shoot. with Jason Kidd. Yeah, who won it with Kidd? <laughs> uh, can't remember if it was another point guard or not. There's a couple names that are going through my head right now. And I think you've you've already used two skips, so you can like guess freely on the rest of this question too. Like you don't have to skip. Right. If you want. Um, was it Grant Hill? It is Grant Hill. Cool. Man, you're ragging up all these three-pointers right now. You're doing pretty good. I feel um, like Steph, man. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to come for his record. Um, so, so you got nine right now. Um, you get one more. You get the goal that I lay out. Um, so here's the fourth question, first hint. This is a current NBA player who had a high school coach, and the high school coach's grandfather coached Len Bias. School coaches, grand. All right, I'll take another hint. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a hard. One. Um, <laughs> I, I I wouldn't guess it either on that. Uh, so the second or the second hint is he wore number five in college to honor his late grandmother. The current player wore number five. Yes. In college. 
to honor his late grandmother. Still nothing, Reed. I'll go with another one. Okay. Um, the third hint is he joined LeBron James and Kevin Durant as the youngest players in NBA history to score 40 or more points in a game. I'll also add to this, like, he did it multiple times. Like, he's done this multiple times, but he joined us, too. Five in high school or college. Um, here we are. <laughs> I'm going to play. Let's rock with. Oh, this is going to be wrong. Dame. Damian Lillard, is that your guess? Yeah. It is not Damian Lillard. Um, sorry, but that's your first strike. You're still doing pretty good. You got two more left. Here's the fourth chance of two points. He once said that he loves football more than basketball. Oh, shoot. But you said he's current. He's a current player? Current player, yes. Football more than basketball. Um, Number five. Donovan Mitchell? It is not Donovan Mitchell. So that's two strikes. Um, You're still doing good. If you get this one right, you still get at least a point. Uh, Here's the final hint on this question. Despite the refs not officially counting it, he essentially ended Gabe Vincent's career by dunking on him this season. Gabe Vincent's? Yeah, he essentially ended his career. Gabe Vincent of the Miami Heat. I would not have seen this. <laughs> um, it went to him. It didn't wear his. It was college number five, man. Stuck on that. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to make a guess here without much. I need to like, think of at least a score, though. Gabe Vincent plays for the Heat. So, <laughs> let's roll with D-Book. That's going to be wrong, though, for sure, too. Unfortunately, it is not Devin Book. <laughs> um, the correct answer is actually Anthony Edwards. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. You uh, went five in college, huh? Yeah. I see. I went to, I probably oh, went to know that. Now that you say hey, grandma, I remember him on his draft day. He had a suit that was on it, or he had a picture on it yeah. with his mom and his grandma that died. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're still doing pretty good. You still got a whole nother question. And then you got the question about me. So, and you got nine points right now. So that's pretty nice. Uh, here's the fifth question. First hint. Uh, this NBA team had the best record in the league during the 2003-2004 NBA season. Oh three oh four. Um. So oh three oh four would be then. 2004 would have been the championship year. Uh, yeah. Wait for for uh, what? Like so, it's, the, it's like the o three o four regular season, which means that... oh yeah yeah, like they had the best record in the regular season. Okay, um, <clears throat> hit me with the hint. Okay, so the next hint is this franchise has not had a top ten pick in the NBA draft in over thirty years, more than San Antonio, three decades. San Antonio Spurs. It is not the San Antonio Spurs. Um, mm-hmm. So that's your first strike, um, and we'll see. We'll see how it. You'll think about the next thing because it kind of ties in, I guess, with the Spurs. But uh, chance of three points. They had draft picks that ultimately became Kawhi Leonard and Karis LeVert. Oh sure, yeah. Um, Kawhi Leonard, what? 
don't want to get it wrong, but I want to say Kawhi Leonard was drafted by the Indiana Pacers at number 15, so I'm going to go with Indiana. You're rolling with Indiana, and that's correct. It is Indiana. <laughs> I, I threw Karis LeVert in there because I'm like, I might throw him off because like, he got traded and then he came back to the Pacers. Um, yeah, Kawhi. Because yeah. that, that was the George Hill trade. Yeah, I feel like I feel like not a lot of people remember that though. So that's pretty good. You got twelve, which is actually pretty cool because you actually had the high score so far on the show. Um, now you could even add to it here if you get the bonus question about me. Uh, this one has no hints, so it's just a random thing. Uh, so we'll see. Are you ready for the bonus? Rock. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what NBA player did I meet and get his autograph when he was a rookie in the league? It could be past, could be present. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, let's rock with um, uh, um, let's go Kobe White. It's a decent guess, but unfortunately, it is not Kobe White. Um, the correct answer is, believe it or not, John Henson. Back, oh, when he, wow. back when he was on the Milwaukee Bucks, um, <laughs> which I figured I had to put that in there because, like, dude, this is one that, like, nobody's going to guess, and this is the impossible level question, you know? Um, yeah. But <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, I mean, 12 points, that's pretty good. So you're at the top of the leaderboard now. Everyone that follows you, you know, they're going to be chasing your record. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> Man, I'm just saying, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like Steph, four three-pointers. <laughs> um People are chasing it. Yeah, and that's that's how many is now how many you made against uh, the Knicks the other day. He made four or something. So I guess yeah, it was four or five, but yeah. Uh, but I guess you were doing your best impersonation, trying to honor him, of course, on his big <laughs> week. Um, but nah, I mean that's basically gonna close out the show. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, any final thoughts from you? Nothing big. Appreciate uh, appreciate the opportunity to come back as a guest, Garrett. Uh, I love watching the show. Love seeing where it's headed. Um, And for everybody that listens, uh, Garrett's taking it the right way, guys. So just just follow the path. um, Stick to the journey and good things are ahead, my guy. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it a lot. I mean, in case you're a new viewer this year and you're just like kind of confused, like what are they talking about? Uh, So we were the co-host of the show for the past two years. Um, But now, like I figured I, I had to get Johnny back on here. I think this is actually, it's funny, I think this is your 75th episode total, and it's the 75th season in the NBA, so I thought that was, like, pretty cool, too. Um, but nah, like, I'm, I'm glad you could be on here. I thought it was pretty good. I'm glad we got to talk about our Bulls, too. That's always good. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically going to close out the show. Again, hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys for watching, and we're out. Peace. Peace.